there's a quiet revolution taking place in Burkina Faso that doesn't get talked about enough. While the Western powers preach about environmental responsibility, they often sideline the very nations they claim to help. However, President Ibrahim Traore of Burkina Faso has chosen a different path, one that prioritizes the dignity and health of his people over the approval of the so-called developed world. Traore's initiative to transform Burkina Faso's waste management system is a bold statement, the country will no longer be the dumping ground of the West. This is more than just a campaign to clean up the streets, it's a reclamation of Burkina Faso's sovereignty and a refusal to be shackled by Western expectations. Waste management is often overlooked as a mundane issue, but in a country like Burkina Faso, it is a matter of public health, economic well-being, and social justice. In many African cities, waste accumulates at an alarming rate, turning vibrant communities into breeding grounds for disease and despair. The consequences are severe, with children and the elderly bearing the brunt of the crisis. The global waste trade, which sees tons of toxic waste shipped from developed nations to the global south, is a glaring example of environmental injustice. Burkina Faso, like many other African countries, has been on the receiving end of this hypocrisy. The West has long treated Africa as its dumping ground, offloading not just physical waste but also the burden of managing it. This is where Traore's approach becomes revolutionary. He is not just addressing the visible filth on the streets but the systemic issues that allow such neglect to persist. By prioritizing waste management, Traore is making a bold statement, Burkina Faso will no longer be the dumping ground of the West. It will be a nation that takes pride in its environment and the well-being of its citizens. The implications of this initiative go even deeper. A clean environment is a fundamental human right, not a luxury. Clean streets and well-managed waste systems contribute to a healthier population, which in turn boosts productivity and economic growth. Tourists are more likely to visit a country where they don't have to wade through garbage, and businesses are more likely to invest in a stable, clean environment. Furthermore, waste management is linked to social justice. In many African cities, it is the poorest neighborhoods that suffer the most from poor waste management. These communities are often located near dump sites, where toxic fumes and leachate from decomposing waste contaminate the air and water. Traore's initiative is addressing this imbalance by ensuring that waste management services reach all parts of the city, not just the wealthy or politically connected areas. The neglect of waste management in Africa is not accidental, it's the result of decades of misplaced priorities and external influence. For years, African leaders have been pressured to focus on projects that please their Western benefactors, often at the expense of their people. The West, with its self-proclaimed environmental superiority, has turned a blind eye to the mountains of waste it exports to Africa, leaving the continent to deal with the fallout. Moreover, Western-backed environmental programs in Africa often come with a heavy dose of paternalism. They're designed to make donors feel good while imposing Western values and solutions on African soil. These programs are typically top-down, with little regard for the specific needs and realities of the communities they're supposed to help. They're more about optics than outcomes, more about keeping up appearances than achieving real, sustainable change. In contrast, Traore's initiative is rooted in the local context. It's not about pleasing foreign donors or ticking boxes on an international checklist, it's about addressing a problem that directly impacts the daily lives of his people. By focusing on waste management, Traore is not only improving public health but also empowering his nation to stand on its own. Traore's approach is grounded in practicality and sustainability. He is investing in solutions that are appropriate for Burkina Faso's current needs and resources, such as purchasing waste management vehicles that can navigate the narrow streets of Ouagadougou and setting up collection points that are accessible to all residents. Furthermore, Traore's initiative is inclusive, he is involving local communities in the process, fostering a sense of ownership and responsibility. This is in stark contrast to Western-backed programs that often exclude local voices and impose solutions from above. Traore's Waste Management Initiative is also about more than just cleaning up the streets, it's about changing the way people think about their environment. He is leading by example, showing that waste management is not just the responsibility of the government but of every citizen. 
the broader implications of Traore's initiative extend beyond Burkina Faso's borders. It challenges the narrative that African nations are incapable of solving their problems without Western intervention. By addressing a critical issue like waste management on his own terms, Traore is demonstrating that Africa can chart its development path, one that is rooted in local realities and priorities. This initiative has the potential to inspire a wave of similar projects across the continent, as other African leaders recognize the power of reclaiming control over their own affairs. It's a blueprint for African self-determination, a model that prioritizes the well-being of the people over the approval of the West. Moreover, Traore's success could shift the balance of power between Africa and the West. If other African nations follow in Burkina Faso's footsteps, it could undermine the West's ability to dictate the continent's development agenda. This could pave the way for a more equitable and sustainable relationship, where African nations are empowered to determine their own futures. However, the path ahead is not without its challenges. Traore's initiative is a bold and necessary step, but it will require sustained commitment and vigilance to overcome the entrenched interests and systemic barriers that have long hindered progress in Africa. The West may also seek to undermine or co-opt Traore's efforts, as they have done with other African leaders who have dared to defy their expectations. Nevertheless, the potential rewards of Traore's approach are immense. By prioritizing the well-being of his people and rejecting the West's distorted priorities, he is not only transforming Burkina Faso but also setting an example for the entire continent. This is not just about clean streets, it's about reclaiming the dignity and self-determination of the African people. As Traore's initiative gains momentum, it prompts us to ask, what are the broader implications of this revolution for Burkina Faso and the continent as a whole? The answer lies in the power of African leaders to take control of their own destinies, to refuse the shackles of Western expectations, and to build a future that reflects the aspirations and needs of their people. In a world where the West has long sought to dictate the terms of development, Traore's initiative stands as a beacon of hope and a rallying cry for African nations to chart their own course. It's a reminder that true progress and prosperity can only be achieved when a people's dignity and well-being are at the forefront of the development agenda. For far too long, African nations have been treated as passive recipients of Western aid and expertise. However, the Traore Initiative in Burkina Faso represents a powerful assertion of African agency, demonstrating that African leaders can take the lead in solving their own problems. This could inspire other African nations to follow suit, ultimately leading to a more balanced and equitable relationship between Africa and the rest of the world. The Traore Initiative is a reminder that development is not just about economic growth or infrastructure projects, it's about improving the quality of life for ordinary people. By focusing on waste management, Traore is addressing a fundamental issue that affects the health, well-being, and dignity of his people. This is a powerful message that challenges the dominant development paradigm, which often prioritizes flashy projects over the needs of citizens. The initiative's environmental implications are also significant. By improving waste management in Burkina Faso, Traore can reduce the impact of improperly disposed waste, including air and water pollution. This is especially important in the context of climate change, where African nations are already bearing the brunt of the environmental crisis caused by the industrialized world. Traore's initiative shows that African nations can take proactive steps to protect their environment, even in the face of global challenges. Furthermore, the Traore initiative could inspire a new generation of African leaders who prioritize the needs of their people over the demands of external powers. This is the kind of leadership that Africa needs leaders who are not afraid to challenge the status quo and who are willing to make the tough decisions that will improve the lives of their people, even if it means going against the grain. The initiative also has the potential to strengthen regional cooperation on environmental issues. Waste management is a challenge that transcends national borders, and effective solutions will require collaboration among neighboring countries. Traore's leadership could catalyze greater regional cooperation, with Burkina Faso taking the lead in promoting sustainable waste management practices across West Africa. This could lead to the development of regional frameworks and agreements that facilitate the sharing of resources, expertise, and best practices, ultimately benefiting the entire continent. In addition, 
Traore's approach could have positive economic implications for Burkina Faso and the broader region. By investing in waste management infrastructure and services, the government is creating jobs and stimulating economic activity. This includes not only the direct employment of waste management workers but also the development of related industries, such as recycling and waste processing. These industries have the potential to create new opportunities for entrepreneurship and innovation, contributing to economic diversification and resilience. However, the sustainability of Traore's initiative will depend on several factors, including continued political will, public support, and adequate resources. While the initial results are promising, the long-term success of the program will require a commitment to ongoing investment and innovation. Traore's leadership has set the stage, but it will be up to the people of Burkina Faso to carry the torch forward. One of the key challenges will be maintaining the momentum of the initiative. Waste management is not a one-time fix, it requires ongoing effort and investment. This means that the government will need to continue prioritizing waste management even as other issues compete for attention. Traore's leadership will be crucial in keeping waste management on the national agenda, but it will also require the support of other leaders, civil society, and the general public. Public support will be essential for the sustainability of the initiative. Waste management is not just the responsibility of the government, it requires the active participation of all citizens. This means that the government will need to continue educating the public about the importance of waste management and encouraging them to take an active role in keeping their communities clean. This will require a sustained effort, including public awareness campaigns, community engagement, and the enforcement of waste management regulations. Adequate resources will also be crucial for the sustainability of the initiative. Waste management is an expensive undertaking, requiring investment in infrastructure, equipment, and personnel. The government will need to ensure that sufficient resources are allocated to waste management, even as other priorities compete for funding. This will require careful planning and budgeting, as well as the ability to mobilize additional resources from both domestic and international sources. Another challenge will be ensuring that the initiative remains inclusive and equitable. Waste management is a public service that should benefit all citizens, regardless of their income or social status. The government will need to ensure that waste management services are accessible to all, including those living in informal settlements in rural areas. This will require a commitment to social equity and the willingness to address the needs of the most vulnerable members of society. This is the kind of leadership that will be necessary to address the many challenges facing the continent, from poverty and inequality to climate change and environmental degradation. Furthermore, the Traore Initiative could serve as a model for other sectors beyond waste management. The principles of local ownership, community involvement, and practical solutions can be applied to a wide range of issues, from healthcare and education to infrastructure and economic development. By demonstrating that it is possible to achieve meaningful progress without relying on Western models or approval, Traore is paving the way for a new approach to development that is truly African-led. In addition, Traore's initiative could have broader geopolitical implications. As Burkina Faso demonstrates its ability to tackle complex challenges independently, it could gain greater influence on the global stage. This could lead to a shift in the dynamics of international relations, with African nations asserting their sovereignty and demanding greater respect and equality in global decision-making processes. Ultimately, the Traore Waste Management Initiative is more than just a local success story, it's a challenge to the global order. It's a reminder that Africa doesn't need to wait for the West to solve its problems because the solutions are already within reach. By focusing on what truly matters, clean streets, healthy citizens, in a sustainable future, Traore is leading Burkina Faso into a new era of self-reliance and dignity, and in doing so, he's showing the world that Africa is not just a continent of potential, but a continent of power. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.